Hi, it's Ricky Hansen, and I want to welcome you to this special audio recording all around COVID-19 and career change. Because if you're a career changer or an entrepreneur right now, you probably have a lot of questions. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to share with you three guiding principles for this initial stage of COVID-19. And there are principles that are already working. I've been using them with my own clients for the last couple of weeks, and they're telling me they're super helpful. And one of my clients said to me, Ricky, they're almost like onboarding principles to bear in mind right now for this initial stage of COVID-19. So I hope they're going to help you too. Now, a heads up, everybody is very different I notice that right now in terms of how they're reacting, how they're feeling, the different timelines, the different reactions from different people. So please listen to this recording with an open mind and an open heart. Some of this might trigger you. Some of this might be perfect for you right now, or maybe it's better in a week or in a month. So just listen with an open mind. I really want to help you. Now, if you're new to me, My name is Ricky Hansen. I've been a professional career change advisor since 2005. So I've got over 15 years experience of guiding thousands of people through periods of massive change and still helping them manage to figure out what the right career, what the right business is for them. So everything I'm sharing with you here is really built on experience as well as on what is happening right now in the real world, okay? If you already know me, you likely know me from my um, very practical, very professionally produced masterclasses and videos. And this might be new to you, listening to me on an audio recording like this, but I really just felt like having a heart to heart, you know, sit down, just turn on the microphone and just have a chat. So that is what this particular, uh, how this is going to pan out. All right. Now, let's get straight into those three principles. Number one is rest if you need to. Rest if you need to. Number two is don't put your transition on hold. Instead, be flexible with your timeline and creative with your plans. And principle number three is practice negativity distancing. So let me run through them quickly. Rest if you need to, but don't put your transition on hold. Instead, be flexible with your timelines and creative with your plans and practice negativity distancing. And they are in no order of importance. They are all equally important. And depending on who you are, you might find one or the other most important for you right now. So pick the one or the ones that apply most to you and start applying straight away. Now, rest if you need to. Are you exhausted right now? I mean, I think most of us are just feeling a level of exhaustion we probably didn't even know we were capable of. So let's talk about that. You know, right now, it's almost like a crash course in the future, It's change, it's uncertainty on steroids. There is this perfect storm of a combo of anxiety caused by loads of unknowables, lots of uncertainties, and then there's a very specific fear, COVID-19, that is also developing. So my friend, if you are exhausted right now, I'm right there with you. I totally get that. What's so crazy is that right now we're having these fight or flight or free scenarios coming at us at an unprecedented rate inside of our own homes. And this is especially the case when we stress scroll on our phones or we look at Facebook, we listen to the news, the numbers, you know. Let's be really clear. There has never been a more important time to remember that you are still the captain of your own ship. So please stop the stress scrolling or limit it as much as you can. That would already cut down on that, you know, exhaustion dramatically. But let's be frank. If there is one thing we all need to prioritize right now, it's our health. And it's especially rest. These are early days of COVID-19. We're still getting to grips with it. And that onboarding phase, for lack of a better word, you know, ramping on can be really exhausting. And let's face it. A lot of us were already exhausted before this, so rest when you need to. You have my permission to rest without beating yourself up. It's almost like, you know what I noticed, and you're probably like this as well, a lot of my clients are really perfectionistic and go-getters, and it's almost like they're beating themselves up all the time right now because they're not doing enough, or there's not, there's this and that, and we feel so pulled to be super productive, and at the same time, a lot of us are exhausted. So prioritize your own health. Put that first. Make this an anger anchor for these times. You know, if in doubt, rest if you need to. Prioritize your mental and physical health. You know, take that nap. 
do that restorative yoga class, you know, stop the stress scroll. I'm someone who suffered from a lot of insomnia over the years. And one of the biggest piece of advice that I can give you that's helpful when it comes to rest is to stick to the same bedtime every night and get up at the same time in the morning. That's really how you can control a lot of this and get back to rest in yourself. Don't give that power away. Most of us can still decide what time we go to bed and what time we get up and how we restore throughout the day. So give yourself permission to rest and really take care that that is a priority. You know, like I say, you have my permission to rest without beating yourself up. Your immune system come first. And here's what I know about you. If you're listening to this around career change, you are, like, you are likely not just exhausted from COVID-19 related stuff. You know, you're watching a video about career change. That means probably that you've spent years maybe even decades in a job or in a career where you are totally overworked. And you probably don't even like that career or that job anymore. And now it's come home with you on top of potentially taking care of children and family. You know, you are likely really stressed right now because that job that you might hate or loathe, it's right now with you at home. That's exhausting. Plus, a lot of us, I don't know about you, I'm in my 40s. A lot of my clients are, you know, in their mid-30s to mid-50s. We're that generation where we worked hard, we're workaholics. For a lot of us, that's kind of how we thought we had to prove our self-worth. So, you know, you might also have been working or are working in a company culture that's toxic, long working hours. So, again, you have my permission to rest. COVID-19 is the shining a light likely on stuff that's not, you know, that already was exhausting to you and not working. So rest if and when you need to. Prioritize your health. That is some of the most important stuff right now. And even if COVID-19 wasn't going on with my career change clients, this is one of the first things I will always tell them. If you, you know, a career change, starting your own business is not going to happen overnight. You need to really lay the foundational groundwork because if you're not healthy, if you're not well, you know, everything else will fall to pieces. So that is the, one of the most important key principles. So not just with COVID-19, but in general, prioritize rest, prioritize your health. Now, what I notice, this is really a hard time for those of us who are perfectionists, Right. One of the things I often talk about with my clients is the baseball bat ritual, the baseball bat ritual. Now, how many times in the last couple of weeks have you been beating yourself up because you didn't feel like you did enough or you're not doing the right thing or you're feeling lazy or whatever? You know, put that baseball bat away. And by the way, you probably did that baseball bat anyway before COVID-19. This pandemic is a fantastic opportunity to practice what psychologists they call radical self-acceptance. This is like a crash course in parts of ourselves that we didn't even know we had access to. Rest is key. Cut yourself a little bit of slack, you know, during this initial time when we are getting used to these new conditions that are changing by the minute, okay? What I also see is that the coping scale is very different for everyone, and it's got nothing to do with your level of intelligence or how motivated you necessarily are. You know, one, you know, you might wake up one day and are ready to take on the world, and the next all you want to do is just, you know, my favorite right now is just chocolate digestive biscuits, dipping them in tea and seeing them melt and just making that into like a mini meditation, you know. So everybody, you know, we can literally feel from moment to moment, day to day, like it's a roller coaster. And we also kind of conflicted. I see sort of two things going around at the moment. On one hand, it's that kind of you know, right, right now is the time to write that best-selling book, you know, doing the bubonic plague in London. Newton, he came up with his biggest discoveries. You need to learn an instrument. You know, if you're ready for that, fine. But it might take a little bit of time to get there. On the other hand, if you're like, bugger off, right now, if I put on pants, it was a bloody good day. All right. If you feel like that right now, that's fine as well. Cut yourself a bit of slack. The coping scale and timing is different for everyone. So in this initial stage, cut yourself a wee bit of slack. Check in with what feels right for you right now. And remember that might change from day to day. What won't serve you right now is to use COVID-19 to beat yourself up even more and to run yourself into the ground. This is a wake up call for all of us to build ourselves up, to prioritize the rest we might never have gotten and to really prioritize our health. Okay. 
for some of my clients, I notice they're literally raring to go and speeding up their transition. And right now, there are a lot of opportunities to do so, depending on what industry you're in. We'll talk about that in point in my principle number two. And others, they really right now need to focus on proper recovery, you know, getting the rest they never had, putting those healthy things into place and still working on their career change, building up their skill set, consolidating the skill set, their confidence, you know, all of that. We'll talk about that again in principle too. But I will say also, remember, this is not going to be over in a jiffy. Right now, it's early April. This is the beginning stages. So, you know, we're potentially going to be in this for not necessarily the long run, but probably longer than we thought Even though some some economies are starting to talk about getting back to opening, you know, now is really the time to, you know, get over that, you know, take care of yourself during the onboarding phase, but then really try to work towards what I call the 80-20 as soon as you can, where 80% of the time you take really good care of your health, you have the good career change habits, you stay positive. We'll talk about that in, in, in step three. Whereas 20%, you know, you might be in prepper mode or you might be, you know, obviously getting information about the health and all of that and maybe also worrying and stuff like that. But try to work towards 80% of the time being functional and then 20% of the time, hey, you know, watch Netflix, you know, eat the chocolate biscuits, all of that stuff. We are human after all. Like you probably have discovered in a way that you might never have before. Okay. So use this time to start building or upping the supportive habits that might have fallen by the wayside and also create a schedule for the day, create those habits. Now, I talk a lot about resilience, a lot about mental health with my clients on a one-on-one basis. So if that's something you want me to talk more about in these kind of recordings, my kind of content, you know, send me suggestions. I am at ricky at ricky.me. So that's R-I-K-K-E at R-I-K-K-E dot M-E. My website is ricky dot me. That's R-I-K-K-E dot M-E. You know, if you've got questions around this or you want me to go deeper on any of those points, just let me know. Okay. Now let's, so that was the first principle, rest if you need to. You know, you might need to do so more so than than you think, and it's okay, and it's actually a vital part of, you know, a successful career change. All right, let's get into principle number two. Don't put your transition on hold. Instead, be flexible with your timeline and creative with your plans. Now, so many people have asked me in the last couple of weeks, Ricky, should I put my transition on hold? Now, here's my answer. No, don't put your transition on hold. Instead, be flexible with your timeline and creative with your plans. And remember principle number one, rest if you need to. I would almost put them together like this. Rest if you need to, but don't put your transition on hold. Instead, be flexible with your timelines and creative with your plans. Here's the deal. Unless you literally are in the very small category of people who are very, very ill right now, or you have to look after someone who's very ill, or you are literally in a survival scenario, you know, you can still continue with your career change. Here's the deal. You are still the person responsible for making your career change happen. You know, so there's no reason why you should put that on hold. And all you need to just think about is that you, how can you adapt? And this is the case, whether that being COVID-19 or not, you know, the future has and will always be uncertain. But you could, there's always something that you can do. So right now, what I recommend is, let's look at the first part of this. Be flexible with your timeline. Here's what I've noticed, and I work with career changes every day. Things might take longer, or they might not. What's really interesting in the current scenario is that for some of my clients, I'm literally noticing that their transition is speeding up because their product, their industry, their service, their career is just what's needed right now and that's in demand. And there are a lot of opportunities just coming out of nowhere right now because that's what happens with uncertainty. There is a lot of opportunity. So here's something so important I really want you to think about. Don't take for granted that, oh, now I have to put things on hold and things are going to take a lot longer. Maybe they aren't. In a lot of cases, I'm thinking they're actually speeding up. And even if there is a slightly longer time frame for you right now, which don't take that for granted, it might not be, it might just feel like that right now. Now is a great time to spend time, you know, skills building and skills consolidating and confidence building. There's always something you can do. And I'll talk about in a minute what else you might want to focus on. But Don't take for granted that things are going to take longer. Be really flexible with your timelines and be open to opportunity. Now, if right now 
you're facing a redundancy situation. It might be that you need to focus on getting, you know, another stopgap job for cash flow. That's absolutely fine. But it doesn't mean that you have to put your transition on hold. You can still do that on the side. Also, what I would say, I believe for a lot of people, this is a fantastic time to consider becoming an entrepreneur, to become self-employed. So you don't have to wait for other people to pick you, to give you a job. You can go out there and especially right now, there are so many business opportunities for actually solving real problems and truly helping people. So keep an open mind for that. Something that I've been preparing people for for years is the fact that, you know, and we've been, you know, you've heard me say this for years, you know, we all need to think like entrepreneurs. This kind of scenario that's happening right now is really showing that there's never been a more important time, in addition to obviously helping other people to also remember that we are the captain of our own ship, career, business, whatever it is. And it's so important you think about what are the factors that are within your control, because still, the majority of factors are within your control. There's also, there was always something you can do. And also, you will feel so much better. Have you noticed what happens when you decide to stress scroll and watch the news and go on social media and really just scare the heck out of yourself versus when you decide that, you know what, I'm going to focus on what I can control and I'm going to do those small things consistently over time that I know are going to lead to my career change, to my business. It is just such a, a much more empowering position to be in. So my friend, please take your power back. That is so important, especially during a time like this, especially when you also take care of your rest, because maybe right now you're just feeling overwhelmed and fearful because you're just exhausted. So remember, hence principle one, you can rest if you need to. And then, you know, come back. That's absolutely fine. Now, um, be creative with your plans. That's the second part of this. You know, there might be elements of your career change plan, of your business plan that you might have to rethink, you might have to change, or maybe not. There are still a lot of things I've noticed with all of the clients that I work with, that everything that they lined up it can still go ahead. It's still relevant. So don't let anybody with all that scaremongering saying, oh, nothing is going to be relevant now and everything is going to change. No, <laughs> there are always certain things that won't change. You might just need to adapt slightly. All right. But also, if there is anything, this should be a reminder that life is short and there's never been a more important time to get serious about creating career or business that you absolutely love. Especially if right now you're working from home in a job or career you don't enjoy, make that flip it and make that remind you why you should really want to spend even more time in your career transition now. Because here's the interesting thing, you might even, you know, you probably have a lot more time on your hands right now to actually work on that transition. It might even be paid, okay? Here's also what I want to say. One of the things I've really noticed recently with my clients, um, some of them are one-on-one, -on -one, some of them are in my online program. And with, with one, particularly one of my clients right now, we've been working on building a business concept for her. And one of her biggest dreams was to be location independent so she could uh, spend time with her family in Africa and also time in the UK. But she was finding it, I kept saying to her, she could easily move the entire business model online. But in her industry, like she told me, Ricky, that's not what we do. <laughs> What's really interesting is literally overnight, her profession has been told to move online and she's actually realizing that A, it's possible and B, she's actually got a natural talent for it. So now she's like, okay, I'm ready to listen to you now, Ricky. Let's do this thing. So what I want you to think about, look for the opportunities, look for the creative things that are coming out of this. I'm seeing clients being, you know, thinking creatively. And I know that this client for sure would not so call herself creative. So there is some one of the most incredible uh, quotes that I recently read was actually in a book about economics. And the quote said, creativity is inseparable from uncertainty. I just thought that was such a fantastic quote because I see this all the time right now with my clients because there's so much uncertainty. It's almost like it forces you to think creatively, which means you think of things you might not have allowed yourself to think about otherwise. So whereas right now, I don't know how this is affecting you, what you're going through right now, but be open to that. Because I see people, a lot of people flip into pure fear. And, you know, that's really, uh, that can really like paralyze you. But try to shift out of that into uncertainty, even if it's uncomfortable, at least uncertain feel feels better than fear. Because in that uncertainty, it will really help your creative thinking. 
So back to that quote about creativity is inseparable from uncertainty. It's a book I just started reading. So I haven't read the whole one. Um, it's a pretty fat, big book written by two famous economists, uh, John Kay and Mervyn King. They've held positions at universities and the government. Um, and it's called Radical Uncertainty, Decision-Making for an Unknowable Future. And here's the entire quote. Like I said, I haven't read the book, so I can't endorse it, but I just loved this particular quote. Humans have evolved to cope with problems which are not amenable to probabilistic reasoning. Our brains are not built like computers, but as adaptive mechanisms for making connections and recognizing patterns. Good decisions often result from leaps of the imagination. Creativity was the quality exhibited by the unknown Sumerian who invented the wheel by Einstein and by Steve Jobs. And as Knight and Keynes emphasize, there are also economists, creativity is inseparable from uncertainty. So just be open to all of the opportunities that will come out of this for you. You do not need to put your transition on hold. Instead, be flexible with your timeline and creative with your plans, okay? Now, whatever you do, Literally, if you want to take one thing away from this, I, I've kept repeating this throughout the years, forget about the all or nothing mentality. Uh, but if I cannot do this, then I'm not going to do anything at all. And ooh, everything is doom and gloom. So I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to stay and watch Netflix and stuff myself. Here's the deal. There's always something that you can do. Forget the all or nothing. It's not helping. Here's the thing. No matter what's happening in the world, whether we have COVID-19 or not, Making a career change or starting a business is all about a series of small steps taken consistently over time to keep up momentum. You need to keep that momentum going. It's almost like depositing, you know, casting future hooks. So keep going. Focus on what you can do and forget about what you're not able to do right now. All you need to worry about right now is what you can do. And Here's almost like a subset principle um, that I'm very much recommending right now to simplify this is to simplify, you know, don't give up, just simplify your transition. So here are two sort of sub principles that my clients are telling me are really helpful right now. So they might work for you as well. So if you are in the category where you still don't really know what career you want or what business you want or whether you even need a change, that is the only thing right now that you should worry about as in what is it that you want to do? I see a lot of people getting really sidetracked and really worried about the wrong things. Number one principle, if you right now don't know what career business you want, that is the only thing you should worry about now, figuring out, you know, how much of a change you need. Do you want to start your own business or do you want to still have a job? You know, what is the subjects you want to work with, the skills you want to build on, what do you never want to touch with a barge pole again, all of that, i.e. figuring out your what. Instead of worrying about how it's going to happen or when it's going to happen, that what you don't even know yet, all right? So this is so important. This is going to save you so much time and worry. I have a lot of videos about how to figure out what you want over at ricky.me. So R-I-K-K-E dot M-E. I also have an online program, Your Career Change Map, that is purely targeted at helping you figure out what you want. If you want to hear more about that, just get in touch. You can do that via the website over at ricky.me. So R-I-K-K-E dot M-E. But that's so important. That's the only thing you should worry about working on right now. Okay, figuring out your what. If you already know what you want, what business you want, what career you want, but right now you're finding that you need to be creative with your timelines, with your plans, then focus on the who. And that's W-H-O, as in opportunities come through other people. So start really solidifying and building your network, whether that's your existing and new network. Right now, there are so many amazing people just sitting at home waiting for your call. Right now, there's such a spirit of collaboration, of wanting to help you know, tap into that. You'd be surprised. People actually want to help, especially when you're someone who's going through a career change, who's starting a new business. It's exciting. People really admire that you have what it takes to do that. So reach out. What's also really, I have a, by the way, if you have any issues in your head around networking and all of that, I got a great video that will help you get over that. I, I define networking as making friends in that new field. So if you want a link for that, just let me know. So also, and this is not just for people who want to start their own business. What I notice with those of my clients who are looking for jobs, 
Often where they find that job is through what's called weak links. As opposed to strong links, they're weak links. So often a lot of jobs, they come via people that might not be close friends or close family. They might be those ones, one person you worked with years ago or someone you went to school with or somebody you spoke to six months ago. Give those people a call. Let them know what you are up to. Connect. Always lead with making friends, connecting. But really right now, focus on networking, on collaboration. That's going to speed up your transition. So as I say, either you focus on the what or you focus on the who. All right? I think those two things right now, that should simplify things so dramatically for you that there definitely is stuff that you can do, right? And also, Here's the thing, if you've got any questions about, again, if you've got any questions about any of these, you want me to elaborate further, this is just, a, a, you know, a, a quick audio I'm putting together. But if you want more details, you've got any questions, let me know. What's really important, and this is so interesting, a lot of you, a lot of us right now have a lot more time on our hands because we're not spending time commuting, we're not spending time going to restaurants, we're not, you know, you have potentially never been in a more positive and time-rich Um, for your career change period than now. So there's potentially no excuse. And not just that, you might even still be paid. You know, so please promise me, whether it's just 20 minutes a day, an hour a day, whatever it is that you can commit to, but what matters, I'd I'd rather you do a little, but then you actually do it and you do it several times a week. Put that into your schedule already. That is certainty schedule that certainty, schedule that momentum. When are you going to take the time to really prioritize your career change? You do have the time right now, especially once you really get to grips with your rest, you take really good care of yourself. What if this was the best thing that ever happened to your career change, right? And that's also really what I, I've been having a lot of heart to heart conversations because here's the thing, what I, and this might, I don't know about you personally, but a lot of t- times when people, they come to me and they either want to work with me one-on-one, they want to work through my online courses. I often ask them, well, how long have you actually wanted to change careers? How long have you wanted to start your own business? And I'm already shocked. A lot of people are telling me two, three, four, five, 10, 20 years. What about you? How long have you wanted to change? What if this was the kick up your behind to finally get your butt in gear and do what you've actually promised yourself you would do. You can absolutely do it. And now is a really, really good time. Also, what my clients are telling me that when they take these kinds of actions, when they take action, when they keep going, it also helps with that locus of control where you actually feel like, yes, you are the captain of your own ship and you can take action. No matter, as I say, whether it's 20 minutes or an hour, but just control what you can control. So not only are you keeping up the momentum, but you would also feel so much better. And isn't that what we all need right now? Okay, listen, rest when you need to, rest if you need to, but don't put your transition on hold. Instead, be flexible with your timelines and creative with your plans. Let's go into the third principle. Practice negativity distancing. Now, have you heard about social distancing, right? You probably got that down pat by now. If not, that's clearly also something to focus on. But what I'm seeing right now, I'm really recommending that you practice negativity distancing. Here's the thing, as I'm sure you're aware, human beings, we are meaning-making machines. We want to judge and interpret everything and make things mean something. And a lot of people right now are very, very fearful about COVID-19. And that results in a lot of negativity, a lot of scaremongering. So you personally need to be really careful about what you make that mean for you and your career change, right? That's so, so important. Now, often my clients, they ask me, Ricky, how can you always stay so positive? Now, I will say, if you didn't know this, I am Danish by birth, uh, even though I lived in the UK since 96 via a stint in Paris. So I'm a real pragmatist. Um, and I would call myself, I would call myself optimistic, but I think my real secret is that um, 
what I mean by saying is that I'm Danish. We don't tend to be Pollyanna style. Uh, we're pretty realistic people. But I'll tell you what my personal secret is. Um, having been a career change advisor for so many years, I've also spent a lot of time researching the future of work, uh, reading futurists. And one of the things I early on decided to adapt was a futurist mindset when it comes to how I deal with change and how I recommend my clients they deal with change. I don't necessarily straight away go into judging. So I don't start away think, oh, that's good or that's bad. I take a step back just like a futurist would and say, hmm, that's interesting. So I don't go straight into judging. And I want you to adopt that right now because I see a lot of people right now, they go straight into worst case scenario. Oh, but this is happening, so I'll never get a job again. Oh, I can never start my own business again. Oh, I'm going to have to put my life on hold for the next 15 years. Am I inside your head right now? <laughs> so try, don't go straight into judgment and especially not negativity judgment, where, which is I see a lot of people do right now. So practice negativity distancing, okay? Don't just go straight to good or bad. Take that kind of, hmm, interesting. Let's see what the opportunity could be here. Don't go straight into threat. Look at opportunity. Does that make sense? I hope you're going to find that really helpful. Now, the Dane in me just want to have the conversation about the fact that there are a lot of things that are very uncertain, a lot, a lot of darkness. I don't know how you personally is being impacted by this. I've got family around the world. So does my husband. So, so one thing I just want to say Negativity distancing does not mean that you don't look at the hard facts, the medical facts, and the hard stuff. You need to be informed and you need to know the medical resources, the, the, the very vital things you need to do to stay alive, to, you know, help other people stay alive. But you get to decide what to do once you've done what you could around that. So there's a podcaster called Sam Harris who gave a really great analogy, um, like the seat build analogy. You know, if you know, we all know that it's kind of dangerous to get in a car, but we still do it. We put on the seat belt and we'll we trust that things will be okay, we can go for a ride. You probably do that every day, depending on where you live in the world. So what that means is that, yes, you need to wash your hands, you need to practice social distancing, stay at home and all of that. But then once you've done that, then you need to give yourself the gift of also getting along and getting on with your life as much as is possible, bearing in mind the other principles. I hope you're finding that helpful, right? That kind of seatbelt analogy. You know, you washed your hands, you've done all the things you could now you need to give yourself a rest and you need to focus on getting on with the things that truly matter. I think that's the way I would say. What also means is that one way of practicing negativity distancing is focus on the recovery numbers more than you focus on the death numbers. That's a great analogy as well. Now, here's the thing. Life is short. Play the long game. Don't let the last couple of weeks or these number of months darken your entire future. Life will go on. And we, to a large extent, you and I and everybody who cares, we're still in charge of creating the future, of deciding what changes. There is a wonderful, um, I don't know if you saw the article in the Financial Times reading, um, written by Arundhati, um, Arundhati Roy, who's a, a famous and wonderful um, Indian writer. And she had a quote in there that says, that said, pandemics are a chance to reimagine, right? What do, what do we, you know, this is not just about health. This is a, a lot of these things are about society, what we want to see changed in terms of healthcare, in terms of, you know, or leaders, if we even want to call them that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's so much opportunity, so much good coming out of this, so much potential good change. That's why I recommend that you look for the upsides, you look for the opportunities to come out of this more than you do the fears, the threats and all of that. And what's really interesting is here's where your psychology can help you if you're aware of it. So human beings have what's called the negativity, but, um, sorry, the, um, the, um, the, the confirmation bias. We also have the negativity bias, but let's talk about the confirmation bias for now. And that means, again, we're meaning-making machines, so we keep looking for things that reinforce what we already believe. So if we believe, like if we take a really negative point of view here, then everything you read or see, you're just going to look to to confirm the fact that you think we're going to hell in a handbasket. However, you can also use that to your advantage. What if you decided to make your confirmation bias work for your career change? You know, really use it to, ooh, 
there is an opportunity there. I, there is a silver lining. There is a great collaboration. There is a market that's really, really full opportunities right now. Wow, because of COVID-19, suddenly everybody's sitting at home just waiting for me to call them, waiting for me to connect them, waiting for me to help. All of that. Here's my real challenge to you. What do you want all of this to mean to you when we're over on the other side? You know, you can choose to spend the next one, two, three, four, five months just pizza and Netflixing it, but you don't need to. If you rest, if you need to, this could still be the time when you finally get your shizzle together and nail that transition. You build real solid resilience. You keep going for your dreams. You don't put them on hold. And you can still watch Netflix and you can still eat all the chocolate biscuits. But again, 80-20, you really take this as an opportunity to make it mean something really positive. Make this, like I said before, what if this was really just the kick that you needed to realize that life is short and what matters more than anything is what the, if there's one thing that the world beats right now is people who love the work that they do because that has an impact on everything else, positivity-wise, health-wise, community-wise. Become one of those. Here's also what I want to say. I, I am I'm a big I'm a real sucker for the quote I'm going to share with you right now. And it's a quote about hope. Because we really need to get our heads on straight. Hope is active. Hope is a verb. So um I don't know if you're familiar with Rebecca Solnit. Um, Rebecca Solnit is an activist, she's a writer, and she's written quite a few books about all the good and all of the community-based stuff, all of the good, all of the positive that actually comes out of very dark periods. So uh, last year, I went to a beautiful exhibition here in London, uh, in London at the Tate Modern by the Icelandic Danish artist uh, Olafu Eliasson. And in the last room, he literally, it, it turned into like a mini library. There were like quotes on the wall, all kind of quotes that inspired him. And one of the quotes was from this lady, Rebecca Solnit, and I'll read it out loud to you because it's so beautiful. I might even <laughs> get emotional when I read it. So here we go. Beginning of a quote. It's important to say what hope is not. It's not a belief that everything was or is or will be fine. The evidence is all around us of tremendous suffering and tremendous destruction. The hope I'm interested in is about broad perspectives with specific possibilities, one that invite or demand that we act. Hope locates itself in the premises that we don't know what will happen and in that spaciousness of uncertainty is room to act. When you recognize uncertainty, you recognize that you may be able to influence the outcomes. You alone or you in concert with a few dozen or several million other. Hope is an embrace of the unknown and the unknowable, an alternative to both to the certainty of both optimists and pessimists. Optimists think it will be fine without our involvement. Pessimists take the opposite position, both excuse themselves from acting, end of quote. So this is not the time to put your transition on hold. Rest if you need to, but keep looking for opportunity, keep looking for hope, keep taking action. You and I contain multitudes, so this will be a roller coaster time. But it's still up to you to choose what you want to make this time mean. And it's still up to you to keep taking action no matter how small. One thing that really motivates me right now is I do not want the future to be up to certain presidents and certain heads of states. I want it to be up to you and to me to create meaningful work, to create meaning out of this. And I hope that this has helped you do that already. Okay, so the three principles. Number one, rest if you need to. Number two, but don't give up on your transition. Don't put your transition on hold. Just be flexible with your timelines and creative with your plans. And three, 
practice negativity distancing. Let me know what you think of this recording. Feel free to share. I am sure you've got friends and family who need to hear this. I'm here for you. I'm over at ricky.me. So R-I-K-K-E dot M-E. I've got tons of videos over there about career change. That's also where you can seek professional help if you want to. And remember, what questions do you have? Shoot them my way and I will very much base my content over the coming weeks and months on the most requested questions. Okay, listen, I am sending you a really big virtual hug. Take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye.